Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to what I would say is an exciting episode of CSK News, but more so kind of a morbid episode. We're going to go into great detail about what's happened the past few days involving OP Skins and Valve, and of course, their Steam platform apparently is suing OP Skins, the largest marketplace out there, not only for CSGO, but other esports out there, other video games out there, and why this could be detrimental to the health and the future of CSGO. So first off, I'm sure many of you guys are aware of what we're talking about here. It was a cease and desist letter actually sent to OP Skins via Twitter messages. I'll show that message on screen for all of you as it did become very clear that OP Skins was being targeted by Valve and their Steam platform. They were sent that cease and desist and apparently have until June 21st to stop all of their operations. Now, I'm sure many of you are aware as well, we had last week, uh, we had OP Skins launch a very cool platform on their website, a new feature called Peer-to-Peer -peer Trading. This is actually kind of a, a bypass to the seven-day trade ban that was instilled a while ago by Valve. Valve had, of course, a huge community response to that. We all, I think a majority of us could agree, we were all against that seven-day trade ban, whether some of you wanted to shorter trade ban. Some of you wanted no trade ban whatsoever. I think a majority of the CSGO community base out there could agree we were mostly against that seven-day trade ban. And of course, we were all well aware of the gambling scene hated that trade ban because it made gambling a lot more difficult. And we saw a lot of websites out there shut down or transition into other skins like PUBG and H1Z1 skins and Rust skins out there. PUBG simultaneously also had their skins no longer tradable on OP skins as well. So that kind of killed that movement very slowly. But now we do, of course, have gambling sites using many other string sites out there, many other strings game skins to actually gamble with, and we're still seeing a lot of gambling out there, although we could say that CSGO skins are used far, far less. But anyway, it does seem that OP skins doing this, trying to bypass that seven-day trade ban, was a great way for not only all of us out there to be able to trade skins back and forth, but also for those gamblers out there that could bypass that. And we saw many websites out there, Daddy Skins, we also had CSGO Magic, talking about maybe incorporating OP skins trading to actually bypass that trade ban. We had users for their websites could then withdraw directly to their OP Skins account and then to their, their own account, they could really bypass that seven day trade ban. So when they're using this on an actual gambling website, there really was no trade ban at all. So of course, there's positives and negatives to this OP Skins trade thing. It did help the, the trading community out there. It also kind of helped the gambling scene as well. And of course, it puts money into OP Skins pocket and you do have to actually ask yourself, what was their main intention? Now, of course, it's to make money, it's, to, uh, it's a business for them. There, there's a reason why they're the number one marketplace out there in terms of esports and selling skins out there and buying skins as well. But you have to really wonder, what is Valve trying to do here? And it's pretty obvious they're trying to protect their IP, their intellectual property, and that's the main uh, issue with this whole suing of OP skins, and it should go their way. It's likely to uphold in Valve's favor here. Will they reach a settlement? That's that's out in the future. We're going to see if OP skins even bothers fighting back, because when it comes down to it, it is Valve's game. That's their IP, their intellectual property, all the skins, all the pictures for those skins, so on and so forth. Yes, OP skins is using that at their, at their consent, and once that consent is taken away, there's really not much that we know as of right now at this point in time that can really you know have OP skins stop that and use it against Valve's will. If Valve says no, it's most likely going to be a no. So we also have OP skins responding to all of their users as well. At this point in time, I would suggest to you and they do as well to withdraw all of your skins on your OP skins account just in case you do actually undergo any trade bans or any bot bans as well. So withdraw all your skins, although there is still a future for OP skins. And I want to clarify as well, this is not me saying OP skins is the hero here. There are definitely downsides to both of these arguments. There's also positives to both sides as well. It's a great thing to be have Valve try and fight ga gambling and combat gambling and we've also seen OP skins try and bypass so many things again and again and again and obviously their in incentive is monetarily. Uh, you know, Of course that makes a lot of sense but the same thing goes for Valve. They're trying to draw more attention to their Steam market and there's also a long list, a long laundry list of benefits that OP skins did list themselves of why we do use OP skins more than we use the Steam market. The first of which is commission the second of which is the inventory and of course the account uh, the account restraints on OP skins are far far more lenient on Steam Market you only have two thousand dollars there's practically no limit on OP skins and again that commission rate is a huge thing I know I pay five dollars a month on OP skins and I have a five percent commission fee on Steam Market anywhere from ten to fifteen percent it's ridiculous you're selling skins and Valve is making a ridiculous sum of money so again this is an argument typical business business argument both of these sides have monetary incentives to do what they're doing the real question is I want you guys to comment down below 
below whose side are you on, who is in the right here, who's in the wrong, who, who do you guys want to win the case itself. It does seem going forward though, OP skins will have a future. They have blockchain technology, they're in works with other games out there that use blockchain chain technology like VGO skins, so that way they cannot be shut down by, by operations such as Steam or Valve itself. But will their future be as bright as what it's been the past three years? Most likely not. It does seem Valve is now targeting OP skins, trying to take them down, and in doing so, they're not only drawing more attention to the Steam market itself, or trying to, they're also trying to put an end to gambling, but it will backfire for them. We've seen in the past as well, the Steam market was hit huge. I think it was, I'm not really sure if it was a weekly figure or a daily figure. There was actually a couple months ago, three to four million transactions on the Steam market per day, I believe was the actual figure. And after that, the seven day trade ban, it dropped by 50%. It went from three to four million uh, Steam market transactions per day to about 1.5 million. So will this actually help Valve is the real actual question. So leave a comment down below. What do you guys think? It does seem OP Skins' future is definitely in the hands of Valve right now. And I think it goes without saying as well, we've seen a huge hit for all the CSGO skins out there. People really tentative about the, about the future of CSGO skins. Can they be used for anything anymore? Of course, all of you guys who are, you know, diehard CSGO fans who just like having a fancy skin in game, there will retain that low value. But what that value is going to be, we have no idea. Anomaly, other people out there posting screenshots of record-breaking Dragon Lore uh, prices out there. Dragon Lore's uh, factory new wise as cheap as almost $800. Of course, we have Don Hossi, other buyers out there buying those Dragon Lords up, hoping that the market will, of course, uh, go back upwards one day, which it might. Again, we have no idea what's going to happen here. Will Valve or OP Skins settle for the case? Will they get a cut of the fees? Will they keep OP Skins in business? We have no idea the future right now, but it's not looking good for OP Skins. But also, uh, kind of inciting news kind of as we transition to next stories as well, we do have a sponsor that was pretty crazy. And ironically enough, it is actually D Market. D Market, one of those websites out there that was formerly owned by one of the owners of Skins.Cash, the second best marketplace to OP Skins, the second biggest one, and they're now running D Market, a place in a marketplace for all of you guys who are involved in cryptocurrencies to go buy and sell skins, and this website will not get shut down. And in fact, it's actually very good timing. This could be the future of the marketplace for virtual skins out there. So I'll link D Market down below if you guys want to sign up and try them out yourselves. Great fees, great commission, just like OP Skins, but in this way, it cannot be shut down, at least in their eyes for now. Who knows if Valve's going to go after them as well. So thanks to D Market guys our first sponsorship in a long time so again their link will be down below but also moving on to that guys other CSGO news stories out there that I did miss in the past week or so we have a lot of big announcements the first of which we did expect was actually Optic Gaming and their brand new all Indian roster I do want to preface as well I talked about them before being an underwhelming roster I stick by those words I think it's a great idea for Optic Gaming to diversify themselves we've seen many organizations out there take a stab at two rosters whether it's two main rosters or a main roster and an academy roster Optic Gaming here though does seemingly actually want to add an entirely new roster and they have done so. They trialed almost 1,500 people all across India. They had it down to eight members across the first three weeks and they have now finalized that roster on screen for all of you. And I do want to say again, I think it's going to be a very underwhelming roster and they probably think so as well. You guys do know the controversy out there. If you do own multiple teams, if they if they do somehow qualify for minor qualifiers, major qualifiers, there's a big conflict there. It's actually no longer allowed for many majors going forward. So Optic Gaming probably obviously thinking their main roster right now, their European roster has a good chance to qualify their Indian roster not so much but nonetheless it raises awareness out there for the Indian scene I cannot wait to see how they actually perform also bouncing off that guys other news as well we do have updates for all of you about the QBF situation that's quantum Bellator fire and I want to let you all know as well they've apparently been bought out that entire CSGO roster will no longer be QBF or quantum Bellator fire surprisingly made our last major and of course they'll be in our next major qualifier as well so they will have stickers but not any more QBF stickers so maybe buy those out if you guys want to they're now going to be playing under the name known as Windstrike. Windstrike's a brand new organization and again I think we're all pretty well aware out there of QBF's latest results. They probably are expected to be one of the worst teams at the major. Maybe not going to do too well but they have some great players out there. Boomble being one of them that I, I love to death and they will have new stickers for that major so it's going to be cool to see what designs they have. Apparently this new company was actually given 10 million dollars in investment and the CSGO roster, the former QBF roster, now the Windstrike CSGO roster will be their first squad and they're actually going to be investing into several squads out there. So look out for Windstrike. They might be the newest esports organization out there and their first CSGO roster is a keeper. All right, that's going to do for today's episode of CSGO News. First off, thank you all for watching. It's going to be kind of crazy, you know, us talking about the death of CSGO. I don't want to say the death, but the dying of CSGO. It's been crazy to see 
while CSGO viewership is apparently dying, the game is, as you guys might say, dying. I still believe in the future of it maybe bouncing back. The channel is actually growing. So I cannot believe you, I cannot thank you guys enough for all who's watching these videos. And maybe the end of the videos where I give you guys some updates. Also, some big updates. Tomorrow will likely be my last episode of CSGO News for the entire week. So if you guys watch my video about me getting a job in esports and moving out to Las Vegas, I am flying out the 11th to try and find an apartment, which is going to be one of the most expensive purchases I've ever made and it's gonna be it's gonna hurt the wallet not gonna lie to you guys so uh, it's gonna be an interesting thing I'm gonna fly out for the entire week from the 11th to the 14th I'll be back here for a couple days to make some more videos and then I start the 20th I start my job on the 20th I'll be vlogging the entire thing giving you guys updates as well as to what's going on but that's the update for this week so tomorrow's episode probably gonna be the last episode for quite some time I'll be vlogging while I'm in Vegas but I have so much to do I gotta get a car I have to get an apartment I, it's a lot of expensive stuff that I'm really stressed out about if you guys can't tell but anyway thank you all for watching as always my name is jake my like you i will see you all very soon and uh it's pretty pretty cool all right goodbye